Hey there team and welcome to another update on Iceland. Today is Tuesday, November 19th. It's about 1 p.m. Mountain Time here, 8 p.m. or so over in Iceland. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Yeah, it's been about two weeks or so since I've done an Iceland update. So the time was definitely, uh, it's a good time to do another update. There's a new Met Office update we can talk about as well as some other things. And so I thought this would be a good point in time to um, add some analysis, show you what's going on with the latest data, and then sort of look into the crystal ball into the future and what we might expect over the next month or so on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So let's go ahead and start with the Met Office update. There was a new Met Office update that came out today, November 19th. Uh, ground uplift and magma accumulation continue. Um, seismic activity is low. We'll look at that here in a second. So not a lot of earthquakes, but they've also had some bad weather, you know, typical stormy weather you'd expect in Iceland this time of year. And that may have been inhibiting their ability to detect some of those smaller quakes. Um, uplift magma cum accumulation continue. However, this is, I think, the important part and one that we'll probably spend some time looking at in today's update. However, GPS measurements have shown indications that the rate of uplift may have slowed in recent days. It's too early to definitively conclude whether these changes indicate a slowdown in magma inflow, as similar variations have been observed across the network far from Svartsengi. At this stage, external factors such as space weather or changes in satellite orbits cannot be ruled out as a possible cause. So basically, as we'll see here in a second with the GPS data, there is some of the last few data points over the last few days do show um, less inflation than we've seen. So we're going off the, the, the linear trend, that slope that we've been seeing for the past few weeks. Um, but it's still too early to say definitively if, if that's real or what that is actually caused by. So we'll have to see moving forward. Uh, they go on to say, if the GPS measurements reflect genuine changes in deformation and a slowdown in uplift and magma accumulation, this will become clearer next week when new satellite images are available to conduct a comparison with the deformation measured by the GPS. So they're waiting to get some new passes with the satellites in the INSAR data and see if that ground deformation data jives with what they might be seeing with the GPS data. And then they have a couple graphs here where shown in the orange here, they just picked two stations, Svartsengi on the right uh, and this other station, HERV on the left and show, and I think the smart thing is the one we'll look at the most, but the last few days of data points for the up, up down uh, measurement here, the uplift has slowed down a little bit, uh, potentially. So it could be influenced by a number of things. Um, and that's the main thing from the Met Office update. So when I read this, I saw especially the sentence here, uh, you know, external factors such as space weather, or changes in satellite orbits. And I didn't know, I don't know enough about how the GPS works to know how that might affect things. So I sent an email out to our good friend, Mike Poland, who is um, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, works for the USGS. And he was able to give me a little bit more information and educate me a little bit on how, you know, uh, that GPS signal could be affected by some of these things happening out in space or the satellites. And so here's what he said to me. This might be of interest, and it definitely clarified for me um, some of this information. Um, let's see, he says, GPS positions are impacted by anything that has an effect, effect on the transmission of the signal from the satellite to the ground. Sometimes this is local, like snow or ice on an antenna, uh, but occasionally it can be a, a broad signal. I, ionospheric interference from solar storms which can impact the total electron content and therefore the GPS signal. So having you know these active solar storms, um, you know, streaming through space as that signal comes from the satellite can sometimes affect uh, the signal. He says, or a regional change in atmospheric properties. For example, a long-lived weather system. He says they see that in Yellowstone from time to time during uh, severe winter storms. Usually these things are averaged out after a course of days, but not always. Solar storms tend to cause chaotic changes, basically more noise. Long-lived weather patterns can change trends for several days. So that was just interesting to me to see exactly how those GPS signals and those measurements that we rely on so much, how those could be impacted by some of these other factors that I just had not really considered before. So uh, it was educational 
for me for sure. So hopefully that sheds some light on it. Um, I did send Mike also the data and I agree with him here in that um, it's a pretty short period of time. And so, you know, making big interpretations on just, you know, a few days worth of GPS data is probably not a good idea. Um, pretty brief period and it's not a lot of change. It's pretty subtle. And so let's go ahead. Let's actually start with the GPS. Usually we start with the earthquakes, but let's start with that GPS data and show you exactly what we're referring to here. Um, so here is the Svartsenghi station and we'll come right to the, the plot we've been looking at the most, which is this one here with the red dots. This is showing the up down movement of this specific GPS station since the last eruption on August 22nd, which is sort of at the far left end of the graph here. And more or less since that time, you can see the, the trend has been one of uplift. The uplift, of course, is caused by magma accumulating in that storage zone about five kilometers or so below the power plant. So as more magma fills the system, that causes the ground to swell and rise and push away laterally in different places. And so this is the the signal we've been seeing. And the trend here at the end is the one of interest. Now it's granted it's only maybe maybe 10 points or so. And this is the eight hour run. Um, so you're literally looking at maybe four days of data or so, but you can see, and there are error bars here, so recognize that uh, sort of a flat trend there where it doesn't seem like the inflation or at least the uplift, I suppose, is still going up. But like Mike says, I think this warrants caution. If you were to look, for example, right here, there was maybe a, a similar stretch, maybe a few data points shorter in um, mid to late October, where it was kind of flattening out a little bit there. Um, you could argue there was a little bit of a lull here in mid to late September. And so remember that the magma accumulation isn't isn't always linear. In fact, it, it's probably coming up in pulses. It's not like a, a continuous flow of magma from the deep reservoir into that shallow storage zone. And so we might expect then there to be periods like the one we're seeing here, potentially, where there's less uplift, where there's less inflation going on. Um, could it be that the magma has slowed down? Absolutely. Could it be that the magma has completely stopped? I suppose so, but I think that's pretty unlikely given that we've had a good solid year plus or so of magma influx into this area. And so in order for us to say it's definitively over, we'd expect to see a much longer trend than what we have currently. Um, or it could just simply mean, like I said, that the magma has moved. Um, it's still moving up, but it's maybe not moving at a linear rate. It's more episodic and it pulses, it waxes and wanes a little bit. Uh, lots of different options here uh, in terms of how to interpret this data. And the best thing we can do is wait maybe another four or five days or so and see wh what happens with this trend. It might just start resuming like this sort of lull here in um, mid to late October and it just starts picking back up. So we'll have to see, but that's the, uh, the interesting thing here. Um, and the other thing that's a little bit interesting is looking at some of the other stations there is a few stations in the area that actually show a little bit of a downward trend, which is interesting. Um, so we've got you know this up and down motion, but overall inflation trend. But then again, these last five or six points in these more outer regions away from the mag magma storage zone showing a little bit of a downturn there. Again, probably nothing uh, too alarming right now. We'll have to see where it goes, but definitely uh, an interesting trend, but I agree with Mike that it's it's very limited amount of time. It's a very slight difference from what we've been seeing in terms of the change. I mean, if, if, if we're at the upper end of these error bars, you could still almost fit a slight upward trend to that a little bit. So we'll just kind of have to see moving forward. Um, so magma accumulating can happen at different rates. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how this looks as the situation progresses. So let's check, take a look at those earthquakes real quick. So here's uh, the latest 24-hour earthquake plot. Here's Grindavik down here. And you can see over the last 24 hours, there's been, what do we got there? About uh, seven earthquakes, all below magnitude one, uh, but they're all occurring in this zone we are uh, where we're expecting the next round of activity is most likely to take place, which is just east of Silingerfeld 
uh, over here near uh, this Stora Stokefelt here. So this this area that has been erupting over the past you know several eruptions, that's the place we're most likely to see the next event. And that's where these earthquakes are happening. But again, small earthquakes, six or seven in a 24 hour period is not too alarming. If we go to the weekly data and go to that same area, again, Godendovic shown down here in pink, and looks like we've got, you know, maybe a few dozen or so quakes. Again, concentrated on that Sunukur uh, lineament, that old trend that has been reoccupied by the last several eruptions. So looks like the biggest one in the series was this one here, 1 1.7. It happened uh, a few days ago, about four days ago, but then mostly small earthquakes. So still somewhat scattered earthquakes, both um, at least in time, you know, we're getting like maybe up to a dozen or less a day, six or seven a day. Um, pretty concentrated in this region here and mostly along uh, this fissure trend where we've seen these last few eruptions. So what we might expect then is the system, if the accumulation continues and the uplift resumes, is to see more quakes starting to maybe pick up a little bit. Uh, that might be one possibility as the system gets filled with magma and starts exerting pressures pressure on the rock around it, forcing cracks open, uh, that will cause these earthquakes to um, occur and then get picked up by the seismometers. So uh, we looked at the GPS and then I guess the last thing I have here is the INSAR data and we don't have anything to show the last few days. So this is uh, some of the best that is out there right now. They should be doing another pass like the Met Office said in the next couple of days or so. So here's one signal that went from uh, the end of October to November 11th, which was about a week ago. So at least at that point, there was still uh, clearly an inflationary trend during that time period. Ground deformation was occurring. Here's another one, same, I guess that's the same one there. Uh, let's scroll down and see if we can find any others. Uh, here's another one that goes to November 6th. It shows a little bit of that. So, but mainly, yeah, I think we're just waiting for a new round of uh, INSAR data to really look at things. Looks like the next, uh, sometime next week or late this week, there'll be some passes over the area that will allow us to see if the ground deformation is still going on. So. So pretty interesting. Um, so that's our update for today. I'll keep you posted on anything else I see that's of interest going on. But the main theme here is I think we should assume that inflation and magma accumulation is continuing because that's the trend we've been seeing for the past year or so. Um, this little slight dip in uh, GPS uplift measurements could just be a small little anomaly that lasts a few days and then uplift resumes. Uh, if it continues, though, like I said, for a couple of days, then we'll have to see how we interpret that and what that actually means. So until next time, we'll see you uh, at another update. So thanks for joining me. Appreciate your support and have a great day. Take care.